Techon team, we're ready to wrap up the week with none other than start swing trading. So you guys get excited. I'm ready to get into the action. Let's go right quickly into a trade that I just got in. I'm sorry I'm getting in there a couple of minutes late. Was just focusing on the trade. Just realized I'm like, yo, Mitch, you, you kind of got to go do the show, right? We can't just sit in the background and trade. Let's get to the action. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on. You guys out there do me the favor coming in smash the like hit the share button down below let all your friends know the swing trading you guys want to check out is right here on benzinga let's take a look at the trade that i just took and just slightly got into the green right now i think i'm pretty much break even so good time to talk about it let's get into the action here taking a shot on google to the downside sorry about the background here let me just fix that up there we go. But now we got that fix here. Uh, let's get to the action. You're at start swing trading. Let's talk a little bit about that. So taking a shot here on Google to the downside team. Uh, got here at 105.63. Okay, so that was just slightly before when we just started bouncing up here. Was wondering, was I going to get stopped out through this 106? That was going to be the risk. Risk was I put it... Actually, I even put a stop there at 10620s. Now I'm just looking at it, looking to see if we can cut down below the VWAP. Why am I taking this trade? Well, I can see a lot of topping action here. And there's a lot of people thinking that tech could have a heavy turnaround. Of course, this is me kind of getting ahead of the action. So I'm just keeping it very small right here on the risk side. If I get stopped out today, it's okay. But if we could have an ugly downturn here towards the close... I'm going to be excited as that won't be too bad for a nice little move here. All right, let's take an action look here. Let's let's see what we got. All right, there we go. I'll put myself a little better full screen so you guys can see the trade. We'll look to see cut down towards that 105. I still have one day trade that could become a swing trade. I don't do this often, but Sox S team, today we were able to nail this on live trading. It was a really good trade and probably another reason why I'm looking at these semiconductors, right? I mean, they are some of them dropping fast. We got this today at 1782. We're up about 3.7%. Took some profits into the 1860s when this started running. Had an order out to cover into the 19, but it never got there. So I'm taking a look here to see if we can maybe have a little bit of a run towards the close. I can take the remaining profits and maybe if I wanted to leave a little bit for the swing, but if I could get to 19 today or like 1890s, I'll take the money and run. Can't go wrong in this sock ass today. We'll see what else is going on. How we doing out there, team? What's going on? Quantum, money mitts time. You know it. Plunge protection team, hard at work. Yelling emergency meeting. Oh, you yell at me if you hear. Um, afternoon, folks. How we doing, Walter? Francis. It's good to have you. Hawaii, let's close out the week green. Hell yeah, that's what I like to hear. Smoke tuna's back, and you guys know it. You can't go wrong with a little smoke tuna. GME shorts borrowing 200%. That's good to kind of talk about because that could give GME a little bit more of a push, right? Who wants to buy shorts at 200%? I mean, not many do. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else is being called out there. Uh, we got Jay Rice in the house. Jamie. What's up out there? How we doing? All right. Easy Mike. What are you looking at, man? You guys let me know. What was on your trade watch today? I'll get into my action. Let's do a little update on the oil trades. And I will give myself a little bit of a hit here. Um, I think, you know, this is one of those where I was looking for a little bit more of an expansion move. So I'm okay with my actions today. But I'm also looking back at them a little bit of hindsight 2020. I think traders do this all the time. So don't stress too much about it. But one thing that I want to take a look at is, man, we bounced back today. Of course, Chevron, why did we go after it? We went after it first for the gap bill. Today, we looked really good like we were going to crack through this 150. And I got caught on the blinders, right? Just looking for the trade to cut through that 150. Pre-market lows down there at 151, wanted to take some profits towards like 150.80s, but never got the action. Now it's been climbing back, climbing back here, looking like it's starting to sell off. But that's about 3% climb. 
that I didn't take the profits, right? We did take profits in this one already twice. But like always, I want to go ahead and look back at my analysis now. And what I would say here is that I'm just going to hold break even on the rest, right? 159.17. Can we get it to come right back down to these levels is something to keep a close eye on, right? I also had XOM. Now this one, I did take some profits today, but not nowhere near probably where I should have closer towards the support, right? We had an attempt to cut through that right here at this kind of 955 instead of taking profits towards that 101 which would have been a good move i froze there looking for the expansion move down towards the 100 and like always we want to go ahead and review it right well ended up taking some profits on xom today so not mad about that at 10289 but you guys can see where 10289s is that's all the way up here relative to where we were, which was about 1.62% from there, about $1.66 down from there. So yes, you know, I'm okay with taking some profits and just making sure that at least I'm going to make a gain on this trade now, but we'll see what happens on XOM. Can it come back down towards the close? I have 105.79. So this morning I was up over four points on this name. So sometimes we got to take that money and run. I felt I was a little bit greedy today, and that can happen. One thing that I'll always be is try to be transparent so that you guys can learn from the process, right? We'll see what happens on oil here towards the close. We'll take a look at the SPY. Let's take a look here. We started climbing out of this, right? We were getting hit all morning long, and then all of a sudden bounce back here around the afternoon. Let's see if we get a hard down uh, closing action towards the VWAP. I'm also keeping an eye on the banks. Banks are starting to turn around to the downside here. Bank of America now starting to come right back down. Goldman Sachs starting to come right back down. So I could take a look at maybe like an FAZ that has pulled back significantly. I like how it even pulled back into the range here around like the 2450 area. It doesn't look too bad, but I don't swing trade these leverage trades. So I'm going to leave the financials alone, but I just wanted to kind of run through it so you guys can see the outlook, right? All right, let's get back to that Google trade. How's that working in? Of course, if we get back above the 106, I'm just going to get out of this trade today. We'll find out if we can get a harder close to the downside here in especially the tech names. Let's take a look at the Qs. Qs holding on towards trying to get towards 310s. If it gets above 310s and really starts closing on a five minute, we could get squeezed out of that position. We'll find out. All right, catching up with the chat. What's going on out there, Captain? How we doing? It's good to see you guys in the chat. Hawaii spy to test 395 one more time today. We'll see. Uh, definitely it was an interesting day. Get the beers ready. I'm with you, Captain. Yeah, it's one of those weekends, that's for sure. Um, I know I'm going to be watching a little March Madness tonight, so... Just going to be relaxing, watching some basketball and, and taking it easy, right? I mean, it's been a tough, tough week. Let's find out. It feels like we're about to break down, says Hammersaw. I'm with you, man. It seems like it's weak and, and heavy here, but that's why that's why I'm taking my shot in Google. Because if for any reason we could just get like that ugly downturn here towards the close, at least I'll take a nice profit. We'll see what happens in this. Of course, Sox S paid me well today so I could take this shot in google we'll find out what happens here let's get to the market overall let's see what was strong and what was not like always you guys can mention strong or weak names in the chat and we can take a look jay rice says i need a vacation head spinning week 100 percent, my friend I, I mean even experienced traders are feeling like this right now this is when i really feel like i know a lot of you guys keep up with the market all weekend long but a lot of the times I even myself take a little bit of a pause, especially on like a Saturday. I, I try my best not to look at market stuff. Why? Because I put so much mental capital into like these shows and into trading on a weekday basis that I need to refresh. I need to reset. I need to be coming clean and ready to go with a bright mentality, ready to get back into the markets on Monday. So like always, We'll reset this weekend, Jay, and come back at it on Monday. Let's keep getting after the action here. Let's take a look. I did see some names mentioned in the chat. 
So we'll keep it pushing. Yes, Soxas did do well today, Captain. I still got a piece of it, Captain. We'll see what happens here towards the close. Definitely going to probably close it unless it just takes off. But it's been such a good position for me. I have no reason to close it right now because of the pattern I see, right? And look at this nice little pattern. Who wants to name this pattern today? Who can get the pattern right today? I'll tell you what it includes. The pattern includes two trend lines here. And maybe you could do a support line, but I would call this more of a trend line outlook here. And what would you call this pattern? Hmm. Who wants to get this one right? Let's find out. Hmm. Who, 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 who knows their patterns in the chat? I'm putting you guys to the test right now. I want to see who's going to get it right. Who knows all about the Japanese candlestick trading techniques? Uh, you know we're going to be going through that this weekend on Sunday. So... Who's got this one? Hey, Quantum with the win on the pendant. Yes, I was wondering if some people were going to say bull flag, but looks like my chat knows the deal. Pendant is the deal. You guys know it. That's not a bad one. There's some bull flag. It's okay to think it's a bull flag. You can't, you're not necessarily completely wrong, but let me explain why and what's the difference, really. What's the difference between a bullish pendant, right? and a bull flag, right? Let's talk a little bit about it. It's always a learning lesson, right? So one thing I'll just do these, I'll make them thicker so that at least you guys can definitely see them. So the difference between a flag action and a pennant is all about where the trend lines are going, right? If the trend lines are going in the same direction, then it's going to be more of your bull flag look. What do I mean by that, right? So let's say if we drew this line like that, where two trend lines were coming down in the same area, that would be a bull flag, right? Now, a pennant, the reason why it's a pennant is because you have two trend lines coming towards more of a center point, right? Like kind of getting thin or thinner as you get closer to the end of this price action. So it's not looking too bad here. We could push through back through the 1860s and looking towards the 1875s. And of course, my rule of three plays with these, right? And we could take a look at the rule of three, but we'll find out what happens with this one if it wants to keep running. All right. It's not just naming the pattern. Should also learn the statistics behind the pattern. Is it bullish, bearish, and what are the odds? Agree 100% quantum. And there's a lot of different like websites that can give it to you. Um, we've talked about what Bowalski and his research before, but definitely you guys can take a look at these so that you can understand how they work. All right, let's keep going. I'm glad you enjoyed that one, Ollie. And I'm sure from this point on, you'll know exactly what the difference between a bullish pennant is and a bull flag. The same thing works for the bearish patterns. And I think it's always important to more long understand, is it the trend line? horizontal line is it the trend lines going in the right direction this is what also helps us decipher between ascending triangles and descending triangles on those you're going to be looking at first how is the trend line is it ascending is it coming upward is it coming to the downside and then where's the horizontal line will tell you that it's more of a triangle but let's keep it moving here let's take a look at some other patterns all right, let's go back to the SPY here. SPY is trying to push here towards 395. So I got to keep my eye on that Google trade. It's pretty close to starting to pop up here through the 106. If we get through the 106, it's going to cut it. It's going to be a very, very tiny loss. We're talking about what? 0.27%. Um, but really, what's the move down, right? Well, the move down, I think we could come closer to this 90 MA, which is a 102 51, which is about 3% on the downside. So I have no problem risking about a 0.2 for almost 3%. That's definitely more than the 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 outlook. And that's all we can do, right? Um, not sure what to do. Best thing to do is nothing. And that's that's okay too. I, I feel like sometimes traders find it way too hard to do nothing. So I also have a tendency if there's days where I'm like, I didn't want to do anything, I got to that point where I'm just like, I didn't want to do anything. Right now, as you're watching this and you didn't do anything, give yourself that pat on the back. Really, 
Because discipline isn't something that is just given. It's something that is earned. What do I mean by that? It means that you actually got to follow your process. If you say you're not going to trade today and you've gotten to that point, it's okay. Give yourself the pat on the back. I didn't trade today, right? That's what's important. All right, let's get back to the stock market action. I do see Google jumping here, so we could get stopped out any moment. I'm just keeping an eye on it. I'm actually going to go ahead and just get myself a little bit more protection here and just make sure that if we do get a little bit of a spike, we're going to get out there. All right, so I'll set that up right now. So we'll see what happens on this one if I do take the hit. Going back to the SPY, SPY looks like it wants to get through 395. Let's go find the bullish area in the market today, right? Different names. First thing I want to do is just take a look at some of the bigger moves in the SPY, right? Well, bigger moves in the SPY, it seems like, are in some of these smaller banks. At least that's showing up. Then we have some oil names getting a nice little push up. A steel name showing up here. So that's interesting to definitely catch. But let's get into the area that I definitely caught really strong today. Like always, we want to show where the, the market is maybe rotating to. One area that I saw today, and you guys might have saw it on the thumbnail, is healthcare. Look at that lift that we got today in the sector overall, up about 1.03%. But what I think is important is that it's starting to bottom right here, right? And so now we can see, will we cut through this on the sector? And will we just start climbing back after these stocks have really taken a hit as of late? So I'm going to see if we can start pushing back here through these levels and making our way back up. Let's talk a little bit about different industries there. Biotechs look like they're bottoming right there. Let's talk a little bit about these, of course. There was a Regenron yesterday that had the good drug news and continued pushing higher today. So yesterday, we talked about how Regenron kind of just hung in there and was a strong stock on a day where, you know, the market was kind of looking really weak. Look at the recovery today. It gets right back above that, right back above yesterday's kind of resistance where it was going sideways and really took out the high. Once it took out that high, it pulled back here towards that resistance, created it as support right here in that area, and then started to bounce higher. So that showed me, yes, continued strength there. Let's take a look at some other of these biotech names, right? There was some more getting some nice lift. I'm going to do it by capitalization so you guys can see some of the big boys here. Take a look at Amgen. This one's a nice move off the kind of 230 bottoming area. And you guys can take a look at the weeklies, the monthlies. Those definitely look interesting. Pushing off the 230, it doesn't look too bad there on Gilead or on Amgen. And then we're also going to take a look at, let's take a look here at Gilead. That one bouncing back to today. Not looking too bad. You can see how the trend line here. Going to look to see if I can get a pullback below 80s, really. Because below 80s, I don't mind it. And I put a box there to remind me. Somewhere in like kind of the 79.50 area. I wouldn't mind taking a shot on this. But had a nice little push. All right. We'll see what else is going on. VRTX just really took off. And this is also another one that I'm taking a close eye on as it's really starting to push back here. Of course, we're a little late to the party as this has run a significant amount today, up about 2.8%. Not a bad move here for a biotech, right? And then you can take a look at the drug manufacturers, the big ones. These are other ones that I want to keep an eye out for. Take a look at the daily charts. Look at Johnson & Johnson starting to show a little bit of a turnaround. Lily getting a nice little push back. And I like how it's holding the 330s as support. Last time I tried to play these 330s as support, they eventually broke down. But let's see if this can actually start getting moving here and get us through the 340s. Avi with a nice little move back. Of course, this one had earnings. I remember this got it popped here. It never cracked that earnings, but it got really close to filling in the gap and now has made its way back. This doesn't look too bad here. Avi, as it starts to push, we'll see if it gets to 160. Merck just going sideways here. Pfizer is another one that is pushing off the 40s. These are all different stocks that I feel like have been really pushed down. They could start to turn around. So I don't have any of these healthcare names right now, but I can tell you at least they're on the radar. Keep a watch.
We'll find out on Monday if they have a day two move, day three move, and all of a sudden we start looking at more GARP type of plays, growth at reasonable value, right? Take a look at these. We'll see what happens with the healthcare names. Definitely getting a nice little push. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other names. Stay tuned, team. You guys keep some names for ticker time. We're about to run through it in a few minutes. All right, let's keep going to some different areas. What led today? Utilities. Utilities led today. I did see XLV mentioned in the chat, but did you see XLU? Not that many people talk about XLU, of course, the utility trade. And that had a nice little lift, pull back to the VWAP and took back off to the upside. Of course, we call this the VWAP bounce type of strategy, right? When you're getting that expansion to the upside, a pull back to the VWAP holds that and then starts the up move, right? This one's a nice one. Continued that up move, went through that high and continued forward. A lot of times I'll sell the, the first part right into that high and then look for the expansion above. Not a bad move there in XLU. And next arrow was one that I was looking for, a 74 pullback really early on. This one came back to 7408 didn't fill me at 74 and then took off there towards the 7550s. Not a bad one that I want to keep on watch. Why? Because it kind of has like this inverse head and shoulders outlook. You can see here, of course, this is kind of the head. These are the left shoulder, the right shoulder. And now we need to draw what? The neckline, of course. If we can get through this kind of neckline action, get above here through the 77 11s, it looks like we could get back there towards the 80s. Not bad one to keep in mind. Next Terra Energy. Um, of course, you guys can take a look at some other utility names. Duke, Excel Energy. These are some other ones that I like. All right, let's keep it going. I do see some names mentioned in the chat. I'm going to leave them for ticker time. Smoke Tuna, but Florida, Florida and Smoke Tuna. I got you, team. Let's keep it going. Walter on the MOC watch. Let me know, Walter. I know you always call him out. All right, we'll see what happens out there. Let's keep it moving in the market. Now, one area that I also was going to take a look at was the industrial trade, right? We started calling out the industrial trade as it started to break down on the XLI. Today, recovering a little bit. I think this is definitely important to keep an eye out for, right? Names that we got to kind of watch. Let's look first at the defensive names. Of course, we're still in industrial. We're looking at aerospace and defensive. And I was looking at this downturn in Lockheed Martin like an opportunity. And I've never really swung trade Lockheed Martin, but it's looking interesting for me, team. If I put this on the weekly, and I got to sometimes put stocks that are more expensive on the weekly, it helps me out, right? It really does help me out. We'll see what happens. Socks S, dun, dun, dun. I'm out of Socks S, team. Just got hit out of that one through the cut down there. They didn't want it to cut 1830s. It could have been a fake out for me, but I just want to let you know that I covered that success was going down towards the other support around the 1830s. I'm out of that one. Uh, but let's get back to the action. I was taking a look here. Sorry about that, team. I got a little distracted there. Going back to Lockheed Martin, right? So this one looks really good on the weekly as you're going to prior resistance now starting to create it as support. Will it make the move to 500? It's made a couple of moves up, right? This last recent third high and third bottom, I really want to start seeing that hold now. So we shouldn't crack through this kind of area down below here. And now we can start looking for that action to take that next step up. So you got 480s, 490s above. And if you get to the 490s, I think we might be able to get towards that 500. Of course, we got close to it on this day, 498. Keep these on watch. NOC is another one you guys can keep on watch. That one looks like it's bottoming around 450s. Will this start to make a move up? LHX is another one you guys can watch, but that one doesn't look as strong as these two. Let's get to some other ones. Remember, RTX is another one, but that's not really moving much as of late. All right, let's go to other areas in industrials. Let's go to the heavy farm and construction stocks. I've been talking about, I've been starting to see the deer trade turn around and start to hold as resistance of that 400. That's not a good outlook as it really could start getting heavy here and just pulling back some of the trade, right? 
Of course, it could just pull back here towards kind of this trend line, but I don't think this is going to hold. You can see how we kind of crack that. And now you're starting to reject the move. I think we could make our way back down at least towards like the 340s, and this could be ending. The deer trade was so good for so long, but when these flip, we got to be careful, team. Cat also back down to 212s, could crack that 212s, be back at 200. Picar, we, we played this one in the 72s to the 75. It's down there to 70 and could be starting to give up a lot of its gains, especially if the leaders are going to turn around. We'll see what happens on that. Those are uh, industrial names in farm and heavy construction. All right, other industrials that we got to keep an eye out for. Honeywell, not looking too bad. And I do got to let you guys know on a loss of the day, and definitely uh, got to let you guys know a loss on the day. It's in diversified industrials, and it's not Honeywell. Honeywell is going to be on my radar because it's trying to turn around. But the one that I got hit hard today, today in General Electric team, I've been trying to battle this one for a little bit of a while. Could see all this topping action today. And I went after it today. I got hit there, especially when it started popping up through here. I took another attempt here in the 9130s and was going to hold towards the 9150s. And man, this one just squeezed me right back out. So they're not all winners here. We also lose on some, and that's how it's going to happen sometimes. General Electric stopping me out today, but I do feel like this trade will turn around. I just might have to wait till it breaks the 90. I might have to be late to the move instead of trying to be early to the move like I did today. It happens, team. Uh, another one in industrials, Triple M. Oh, yeah, this one just on a slow leak, man. Um, I don't know how investors stay in this one. I've talked about it for a while. Too much kind of lawsuits and things like that. This just keeps leaking and leaking and leaking. I don't. I, I just don't know how you stay in this name. I mean, from kind of 2001, it's down 50%. It just doesn't look good, team. Uh, Quantum says, I like Honeywell. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's had a really nice pullback. I like the monthly outlook. Every time it gets here towards this kind of 50 uh, 50 month average. It has a tendency of bouncing. It's had a tendency of bouncing in the past. So just keeping an eye on it to see if it can turn around. And it's been like three months down, also like almost four months down. So if we could get that turn back to the upside, it won't be looking too bad. And the RSI is just kind of hanging in here. We need to see a turn towards like the 50. And nice bottoming action, right? You rejected 185 today. All right, that's going to be these industrials. Let's keep it moving, team. You guys smash the like out there. Technology still in the red from the open, but starting to push a little bit there out of the Google trade as we just got that recent spike. So, hey, it happens, team. I took my shot there on Google. Doesn't look like it's going to work out today as the spy just keeps climbing and climbing. And it, it seems like lately, whenever, whenever we get these extreme downside moves, we just kind of climb the wall right back. So that's why I like it when we kind of get these little uplifts at the market, but it's not a complete disaster. And this is where it gets a little bit difficult, right? Because we are starting to keep up above the trend line, right? I've talked about this for a while. Would we actually start cutting down into these levels, right? Getting back into the 380s. Well, we're rejecting that right now. We'll just have to wait to find out. All right, let's get let's catch up with that. Follow the rotations, and it's it's definitely important to follow the rotation. Uh, seen this a million times last last year. They rotate funds to the Russell and then sell back the next trading day. Yeah, it could very much be right. Got to keep it up, team. Just watch patterns. Write them down. And we'll see what else is going on. Triple M, what Mitch calls his mom. <laughs> oh, no, man. Uh, it was a good one. It was a good one. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look there. Amazon's looking weak. That one, I definitely think, uh, could be in trouble. It's tried to get to the 100s multiple times. Just can't make the move. Rejecting it like four or five times here as of late. So I don't like Amazon right now. That's definitely one I don't want to touch. 
All right. NVIDIA was one that I was thinking about a short early on in the day. I was looking for a push, though, to 270 area to get short on this. Why? Because there's a lot of topping action in this kind of 273 area. And yeah, we could get through it maybe towards the 280s, but you can see that kind of topping action and kind of this trend line here. How you got now three highs and lower highs. Of course, it, what it does is it at least gives us an out, right? At least we know where we need to get out on a name like this. And that's also important, right? We'll see what happens if we can get to 270s. That won't be too bad of an idea, at least for me. AMD still pretty weak in AMD today. And this is similar, right? Double topping, now pulling back. Could come back towards about 95 on AMD. All right, what's going on out there? Smash before the show even started. That's what I like to hear. Jay, almost all opening flushes last few weeks have been bought. Yeah, I agree with that. Something to keep an eye out for. Captain, too many bag holders. Played this game in 2008. Uh, we'll see. World War III scheduled this weekend. No, man. Oh, no, no, no. Please. I've had enough with the banks. I don't think I can deal with more political concern and more issues out there. We'll find out. All right, let's get into some questions in the chat. Let's go to some stocks. I did see some being mentioned that are in an interesting area. So let's go looking. All right, so we're looking here at a little bit of some discount stores. Let's get to the action. Marky bringing in here Costco and Walmart. You guys smash the like if you guys enjoy getting through some charts. And of course, taking a look at some of my swing trading action. You guys out there, smash it up. Let's go. See how many likes we can get today. All right, let's get to the charts here. Walmart, of course, has been trying to turn around here. I've been watching this kind of long-term trend and looking to see if we were going to get down towards the 130s or just push back here towards the 150s. It looks like we did that kind of little undercut and rally move here for Walmart. So we could see some pullbacks kind of get bought here. So we'll see what happens there on Walmart towards like 141 pullbacks. But nice little push here today on the day above the 142s. So I'll be looking to see if we get that pullback. We got a nice little pullback earlier today that went to 141.14 and was quickly rebought up. We'll see what happens there in Walmart. Let's go to Costco, Costco and that lovely 500, right? Well, you got a lot of volume coming in here. Also looks more like an undercut and rally type. And a lot of volume coming in here on this day, the, uh, the 17th. So I would definitely watch that low, make sure that I understand where that is. And looks like we popped through that 490. And we're looking like we want to make our way to 500. The only question is, will we be able to make it to 500? Find out, team. Costco does not look too bad. Let's take a look at the one that's really lagging, which is a Target. And this one's been lagging for a long time. We're looking to see if it is ever going to turn around. It did get a lot of volume as, a, as of recently. And why are we getting so much volume on that day? That's where I'm starting to get a little bit interesting. And definitely going to go ahead and set levels. Moves above these are going to be very important for me. Because it could be a big buyer stepping in to the discount stores. Let's go to some other ones. Dollar Tree bouncing. Of course, they had their earnings. Um, it tried to make a move here. It doesn't look too good on Dollar Tree. Uh, let's go to Dollar General. Definitely not looking good there. Burlington, Burlington, Burlington. Do you guys remember I shorted Burlington? Oh, man. I don't even want to talk about this stock. This stock burned me bad, team. Their earnings came out and I got crushed. And I think I literally got out on the top. I got out on the top of the move, team. It happens. It happens, team. We'll see what happens there on Burlington. They, they put me on a coat hanger that day and they sold me. So we'll see what happens on Burlington. It is going down, but I had no idea why this stock was even up there in the first place. Looks like it's finally coming back to reality. We'll see what happens in also retail stores. I was looking at stores at retail today to see if it continued going down. Macy's went down today. KSS, ah, not too bad on KSS today. Let's see uh, Nordstrom. Nordstrom bouncing back a little bit on the day, but these charts do not look good. 
by any means. And I don't know if you guys saw Express, but um, that's now a penny stock. And uh, that's a little bit dangerous there. I'm, I'm really t- keeping an eye on these apparel stores to see if they start to really break down. AEO, Urban, stocks like this. Are they going to be able to hang on? Especially if we go into recession. We'll find out. All right. Catching up with the chat. What's going on out there? Uh, on, on. Is that still moving? We still got on, on moving. Let's take a look. Man, this one's just been an absolute monster. Look at that. Three-day move and almost back to the high of yesterday. It's really impressive, actually. On, on really being able to hold pullbacks on the hourly. And I like how this just kind of did what? Mm, let's see. It was a bull pennant here. <laughs> I love doing this, team. Nothing like it, right? Then a bull flag. So you got a bull pennant, a bull flag. And then now what do we have here? Hmm. Looks more like an ascending triangle, you could say, right? We'll see what happens there. It looks interesting, team. I, I, I got to say, it's always fun to watch patterns. One thing, though, to know, I always like knowing stocks that hold patterns, right? Because if this is going to hold patterns and be so leveled and so clean, we can look at this stock for reversals, maybe to the downside or to see if it continues these nice up patterns as it continues to make the lift on on with a nice push. On on four bagger on leap still have 665 days to go. Man, Jay, I don't even know how you do the leaps. Power to you, my friend. I know I couldn't do those. All right, let's keep going. Did you look at Microsoft? No, Raz, let's take a look. All right, Microsoft, let's see here. I was watching it earlier in the day to see if it was going to break down. I drew like a little bit of a, a like a five-minute trend line. You can see how you, we came back through this. It's kind of more of that symmetrical outlook. It did get that nice little uplift and staying strong. That's one thing that I don't see turned around here on Microsoft. So we'll see if it ever breaks 270 on the downside. But right now, Microsoft's looking strong. And that's where it gets a little bit weird because look at the weekly chart. If this puts in a big candle towards 290s next week, yeah, these are going to be breaking out and a lot of people are going to be feeling a little bit of the FOMO. We'll have to wait and find out. The Rivian bottom. Hmm, is it down to $5 yet? I want to buy it at 5 Up. Uh, Almost there, team. Almost there. No, nah, I'm just playing, team. We'll, we'll see what happens in Rivian. I actually wouldn't mind investing in Rivian, but it'd have to be pretty cheap. About halfway through from the 16, I talked about it. Around $8. I don't mind taking a little bit of a shot in the long-term account. We'll see what happens. Same thing for Fisker down towards like 2 or $3. I mean, if this could get that cheap, I don't mind taking a little bit of a shot on it. And for that being mentioned... If Lucid could get down to like $3, $4, eh, why not, right? Man, I remember when I was calling this short here from like 25. Should have stuck with that Lucid on the short side. We'll see what happens. Leverage, leverage. Hmm. Hey, can't blame you on that, Jay. Market makers flushing out the bears before the big flush of this turd. Well, you let me know. We'll get the Drano. Clear that. And we'll get it right out, man. All right. Just keep it going. Chico, do you think the SPY might be about to break down? Well, we talked about that. It looks like it is, but that doesn't mean that it has to, right? And I think that that's one thing that we need to always keep in mind. When things look good, doesn't necessarily mean they have to go in that direction. We'll see what happens on that. How's Snap doing with the TikTok mentions? It is getting a little bit stronger here. So if you guys feel that TikTok is going to get banned, I couldn't blame you if you took a swing on this Snapchat. Um, I'm, I've already gotten stopped out twice on Snapchat, and I've tried to make. I, I've made some winners in the like the day trade action. I haven't been on top of it, but it does look interesting for that kind of story. How's the Pinterest doing? 
Pinterest is trying to push higher. It's been up here multiple times and hasn't made the move. That doesn't make me feel as confident. All right, it's 344. We'll keep it going, team. Let me just drink a little bit of some water. I'm going to play a quick little trailer, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, team. Introducing portfolio synchronization with your brokerage. Now you can securely connect your brokerage account to Benzinga Pro, opening a world of personalization. Screen lightning fast news just for the stocks you own. Set alerts for news catalysts that affect only the companies you care about. It's all possible with a simple click and a secure protective connection. Overcome uncertainty and connect your portfolio to Benzinga Pro today. All right, team, I'm back. Let's get to the action. Let's keep it going. You guys keep dropping those tickers and we'll keep taking a look. We sold Meta and Snap PM. Let's take a look. Meta, what's up with Meta? Hmm, that's been such a nice run. Honestly, I did not expect this run from like 90 to 206. Man, this is why sometimes you want to stay in the bigger names, right? It's not often you get a like $90 stock to go back to 200, right? Like, I mean, this has been climbing the walls of worry. What's up with Tesla? Hmm, Tesla. Ooh, the 200 rejection. No bueno as it's starting to come back down. We'll see if this ever comes back to fill this gap. This is the gap that I think you got to keep an eye out for now because you could come back to fill this. And if you come back to fill this, are you going to be feeling so bullish on this kind of name? I don't think you will, but we'll find out. 185 is, I think, is a definitely an important level to watch. Uh, there's also a little mini gap into this area right around here around the, the 185s. I'll look to see if we cut through that on Monday, but Tesla's not looking the strongest after it rejects the 200 breakout move. And what do you see up there? One, two, three. It tries to go up for the fourth time, fails. Roll of three coming into play for Tesla. All right, uh, pre-market, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha, that's why you have it, man. That's why you have them, easy. It gives you that those corrections. Can't go wrong with that. Ford, what's up with Ford? I know they released uh, their news about their EV kind of factory in Tennessee. I don't know about these EVs. They don't look great at all. Let's just be honest. All right, let's get back to the energy trade. Well, I see some of these oil names come back down before the close. Will we see it? Hasn't happened right now. We'll find out. Meta, the next bubble to pop? I mean, I don't think... Will it pop? I mean, it is up there, man. It's. I'll tell you one thing. It's definitely heavy here because you got a, you got a couple of attempts to get through there, right? Like one, two, three. I, I'd give it this fourth attempt to try to get to 207. But if we crack 203 on the downside, yeah, we could go after this. I'm going to set an alert here for Monday. If we crack 203s on Monday... We could be taking a shot on Meta. Tesla is so overvalued. Yeah, that's the problem, though. Sometimes it's undervalued. Sometimes it's overvalued, right? That's how these stocks can be. The real question is, is the price justified for where it is now, right? And that's the hard part, I think. And that's why stocks price change so much. Some Someone might think it's overvalued. Someone might think it's undervalued. The truth is, We'll have to wait and find out, right? Will it get that up move? Will it get that down move? A lot of times people say this depends more on valuation. It more depends on the current market environment and the collection of investors as a whole in that stock. I don't think Meta Pops has been hit earlier. No. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been hit earlier. It's just been a crazy ride up as of late. So that's that's why it's really impressive. Airbnb back down through here towards the 116s and American Airlines. You guys know I wanted to get this at 14. It's back down there towards 1336. Do I go after it now or do I look for another bottoming event here? And one thing to note, though, I clearly see one, two, three. This could be the turnaround area right around this 1333s. I'm going to keep this one on watch. I want American Airlines. The only question is timing, timing, timing. Will we be out of the banking concerns for me to get this one, right? 
That's what has to happen. Let's go to the five minute on these banks. Wanted to see if we got a downturn towards the close. Couple of tops here in the 125. So we could start seeing a little bit of a turnaround there in day PM to the downside. Similar outlook there in Bank of America. Let's start seeing if these sell off towards the close. SPY overall starting to turn around here. Now we could start seeing a little bit of a turnaround. Did Google just stop me out? Ooh, just stop me out there. Right through that 106 area. Now holding that 106. Look to see if we get rejection there. I will never invest in Tesla. I don't care if it's the last stock on earth. Don't worry, Hammer. You can say, I won't invest on Tesla even if you buy me the shares, man. That's what I say all the time. Even if you guys bought me the shares, I, I wouldn't take it. That's how it is sometimes. All right, let's keep it going. What else is out there? Sorry, meant drop. Yeah, you don't think meta drops? Why not, Raz? Let us know. Why don't you think the meta, meta could drop? All right, looks like the usual end of the day so far. Yeah, sometimes. What do you guys think about those end of the day balancing? Do you find edge off of those plays? I would love to find out what you guys think. I know Easy, Walter, you guys pay closely attention to those. What do you guys think on that? You guys find edge? Talk about Google before the close? <laughs> uh we'll see i mean google's been so strong i'm still always going to be kicking myself about this 90 area but can we get back to this area this is the important area um where you were before bard ai right bard ai came out and chapow but can we get back through that level if we got back through that you seen how this 50 is curling right look how this has happened in the last week i talked about this this is really strong pivot here from the 50 moving average shows a lot of strength. I'm not saying that it's always going to be able to hold this, that it could get to the 200, but doesn't look too bad. Microsoft did give us a golden cross. Apple did give us a golden cross this week. And if we take a look there, of course, the SPY has remained in the golden cross. But one thing to note is that the 200 has started to move down. For a slight second, the 200 was starting to actually move up. Now it's moving back down. So be careful. I want to see if that 200 can hold. If we break that 200-day moving average on a daily close, we got to be careful, team. Still looking to see if we can get the expansion run up, which would be a move into this area. But the bank concerns are just crushing that right now. And anytime that we get a little up move, bank concerns come back. So that's the question I think we need to keep an eye out for. Will we see more contagion in this weekend? Find out. Deutsche Bank actually bouncing today after really getting pummeled in the after hours. Look at that. Pretty much climbed the, almost the whole wall of worry from kind of yesterday's low, which would have been a move towards that 950s. Seems like DB was able to make it back. Meta has good relative strength. Definitely does. We'll see what happens there. Um, catching up with the chat there. Sell side, 2.4 billion. Ooh, that, 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 that might actually, actually bring us down, right? I mean, 2.4 to the billions to the downside. We always look for the billions there in that uh, closing imbalance, right? If it can get into the billions, usually we see some action. Look who it is. It's Change Agent. I haven't seen you in a little while, my friend. It's good to have you back. Weekend risk. Banks running uh, run at, at the building and loan. We'll see what happens. I mean, I'm not touching these banks, but it's just too much concern. Walter, I'll take scalps or against the closing price or the imbalances. Occasionally likes it more for inform my ideas of how the market's feeling at the end of the day. I can't blame you for that. Nice move today in our bot. Mm, our bot. Let's take a look there. Our bot by Curious Surgical. Hmm, interesting. I think I've actually spoken to this company. I, I, I spoke to too many SPACs at one point. So I, I gotta I gotta really look back. Um, but this one's an interesting one. And yeah, yeah, this is this one was a SPAC that I spoke to. Um, I this is the interesting one. This is the one that can like do like these like ridiculous turns inside the human body, right? Where normally a, a hand can't do those types of 
like procedures, right? So it's pretty interesting. Did Arbot get an FDA approval? That would be pretty interesting. Smoke Tuna, I don't know if you know anything. Why did this move today? Did this get a little bit of a lift just because it's oversold? Or is this specifically something towards the company? It's a pretty nice move there. It doesn't look too bad. Arbot, let me see here what Benthinga Pro has for us. Um, looks like there was some insider buys on Thursday. I'm not seeing much right now on why we're up so much. But hey, you let me know in the chat. It's an interesting one. Um, of course, really cheap. So you got to give it some time to really work its way back. And it's a medical device, right? How much is it really being adopted, even though it could be very beneficial? We'll find out. It's oversold from yesterday. Hey, we'll find out if it can continue to run. Baba. Baba is definitely playing part in the China tech. Um, we were we were looking at China tech to see if we could get a rally in those. And I definitely keep an eye out on all the China tech, like PDD, Baidu, uh, JD. They're all trying to, it looks like they're trying to get that little uplift move, but will they get the move? Baba looks like the strongest one out of all of them right now. Keep an eye out to see if it can get through that 90 spot. But the only problem with these China names is the gaps. Look at the gaps on these charts. The gaps scare the living hell out of me. Because sometimes it's like a gap down from like, let's say 87. And then it opens the next day at 84 and 89. That's too gappy for me. Um, and that's why I don't like to use Baba so much. And these China names, because it's just, it's just too much gap and overnight risk. I never know what the hell is going to happen in China. So to each his own, if you guys like it, can't blame me for it. Energy dropping a little bit. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look. XOM towards the close. There we go. Finally, a little bit of a drop there. Not, not the most massive drop, but doesn't look too bad. We're going to hang on to the oil trades till Monday. It's 356. We will see what happens throughout the weekend. I'm going to start wrapping it up, team. Smash the like. We'll see what else is going on. Uh, KVH, Holmes name. I, I, I don't trade these ever, really, uh, like KVH and Toll Brothers. This looks like it is getting a nice little lift. It looks like a cup and handle, a big one, right? Well, let's see if it can get through this high here. If it can get through that high here, the wick there, about 41, it could make that cup and handle move. We'll see what happens there. Toll brother, that doesn't look too bad either. You can put this on a weekly to kind of clean this up a little bit. And you can see here, like you got that 60 outlook, right? This doesn't look too bad if it wants to give you that little push there through the 60, making it its way back there to 63s. Not really something I trade often, but it doesn't look too bad here. We'll find out. Stay focused. Let's see what happens. Apple 160. Hmm. Apple, the big thing for me is watching 157, but a lot of people might miss this big run in Apple. It's trying to run. I feel like it is. The only question, can the bank concerns get shore up? And then big tech, keep us lifting. We'll have to wait and find out next week. Next week, we'll give us a lot more information on the banking situation. Will we see more concerns in the banking? That's what we need to keep an eye out for on the weekend. Of course, a lot of the action has actually happened in the weekend. Last weekend, we got Credit, Sw Credit Suisse, right? Before that, we got SIV and, and uh, Silicon uh, Bank and the SBNY, right? That happened all on the weekend, right? So be careful. A lot of these bank concerns have come throughout the weekend. Will we get another one? Find out, team. Like always, I'm going to be not watching the, the news tape on Saturday, but on Sunday morning, I usually come in, start reading the news again, get back to the markets. Battle down, battle down. We're about to hit that bell. We got about two minutes left. And then from there, yes, yes, pinky on up. Pass me a beer because it's been a long week. That it most definitely has. I'm going to go ahead and just take it easy. We'll see what happens on these oil trades. Definitely took some shots today. Even took a shot in Google. Didn't work out. And that's how it goes sometimes, team. Right now, we're just kind of climbing that wall of worry, even though there's a lot of worrying out there right now with the bank situation. Look at the SPY making its way back here, almost to the high part of the day's range. 
Doesn't look too bad at all as the spy. Actually never even made it back to the VWAP since about 12 o'clock. That shows some strength. Now the only question, will it hold? Humble Ninja, right? Typically shut down the banks on Friday nights. Yeah, it, it, it's tough. It's tough, especially when they do this stuff on the weekends. You really can't do much. And we can't really take advantage of it as if it was done during the weekdays. XLF. XLF also not looking too bad. Has pulled back significantly. Now looking like it wants to reverse all to 31s. I'll tell you what. You at least know you're out here. It, it's going to be like 30 or this is just going to completely collapse. So I can't blame you guys for looking at XLF. But I'll tell you right now, why would I even want to take this? Even if I get a move all the way back to the highs, to the highs, all the way, new all-time highs, I make 40%. I don't know if I want to be doing that. It could take years for me to get that. We'll find out. I know I'm not probably going to be taking the XLF trade, but to each his own. Smash the like. It's 4 o'clock. Pencils down. Bells rung. I'm out of here, team. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And this weekend, I want you guys to catch something else. So I know I do a lot of stock market content, and I know you guys want to check out some more kind of weekend stuff. So all you guys listening in right now, don't miss out on this thing. Sunday night, we're going to do a little bit of some charting action by my man, Ryan Rosbiani. He's going to be taking over the Benzinga stream, Benzinga takeover. You guys want to check him out? He's just going to be doing charts just the same way I'm doing. Find that out Sunday night. You guys can come over here and just get through some charts. Don't miss it, team. Check that out. Ryan Rose Biani on Sunday. You don't want to miss that. And that's going to do it for me, team. Smash the like on the way out. I'll see you guys next time. Always follow me at MoneyMitchBZ. You guys can send me messages. You guys can hit me up. I see this move. I see this pattern. What do you think, Mitch? Always here for you guys. Smash it up. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. We'll see what happens in March Madness, but we have enough madness in this market.